Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2018 State of the City Address. My name is Denise DeSantis, and I'm the Director of Community Engagement and Public Information. I will be your host this evening. We're going to begin the evening tonight with a very, very special guest. Her name is Alexis Jones. Alexis Jones is the daughter of Carla Allen, our HR human resource generalist, and I am told that of Alexis is 20 years of age. She's been singing most of that time. She's traveled around and sang around the country, in churches, in schools, and she will join us tonight. So if you could please stand with me and alongside Alexis for the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still always beautiful to hear the national anthem, but it was wonderful this evening, wasn't it? Thank you so much, Alexis, for joining us today. Our theme tonight for the State of the City Address is envisioning the future of Oak Park. We will have two speakers tonight, one of which is our honorable Mayor Marion McClellan. The mayor has served four terms, which means you've elected her for four terms. A wonderful statistic to have. And she's also um, seen around the city. So you see her at events, practically every event. You see her at activities, right? Practically every activity. She's approachable, she follows up. And if I might add personally, she's a great hugger. She probably gets more hugs in this city than anyone else, and I'm a little jealous. Um, she's fantastic. As the mayor, she presides over city council during the city council meetings, and she's also uh, uh, on city council with our city council mem honorable city council members. Uh, they together elect our city manager who, who is in charge of our day-to-day -day operations here at the city. And that's a good segue into our second sp uh, speaker because he will be uh, addressing us tonight as well. So what does it take to have a really good city manager? It takes some fantastic skills. He has a skill set that, that um, when put together has saved us $1.8 million in one bond issue because he, uh, we had a great credit rating here in the city. He also has wonderful experience. He hails from the government, he hails from economic development and finance. Those put together helps us in the decisions that he makes day to day. He's also a great leader. I have 14 directors beside me and they'll probably all tell you that he has a vision and he has a plan. And as long as we're under budget and on time, believe me, under budget, on time. Then we're doing really good with the city. So without further ado, I have the pride and the honor to introduce you to City Manager Eric Tungay. Thank you very much. Denise, um, I'll pay you afterwards, just a minute. Thank you very much. Good evening, uh, residents, dignitaries, Madam Mayor, members of City Council, 
and members of the Oak Park staff. On my right, we have our management team against the back window here. And on my left, how about our handsome public safety officers? Fantastic. As Denise mentioned, I'm City Manager Eric Tungate. Here with me tonight are members of my own family. Lisa and our little Vivian Emerson are here. Lisa and Vivian, could you stand up? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Lola could not be here with us tonight, but she did last night. She wanted to do a drawing. She felt terrible. So here's her drawing from last night. I wanted to share that. She will be very moved by the fact that I put that up there, and she'll think she's famous, which is, is she's nine, so. Uh, as has become customary, I have the honor and the privilege of introducing our mayor, Marion McClellan, who will be giving the address tonight on behalf of her colleagues to my left on city council. Before I introduce the mayor, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to introduce some of the exceptional members of my management team. As I mentioned, the, the folks here on my right. And I'm going to go through each of the directors. So directors, if when I announce your name, if you would stand, I would appreciate it. We're going to start with Assistant City Manager and Director of Public Works, Kevin Yee. Kevin. Our Director of Public Safety, Steve Cooper. Director Cooper. Our Director of Technical and Planning, Robert Barrett. Hi, Rob. Our Finance Director and Resident of Oak Park, Sandra Crawford. Our Director of Strategic Planning and Special Projects, Crystal McLean. Where's Crystal? There she is. Trying to hide over there. Our Director of Economic Development and Communications, Kimberly Maroney. The one bringing all that new development into town, which we love. Our Director of Community Engagement. You met Denise DeSantis. Denise, great job. There she is. And some of our unsung heroes uh, in our Human Resources Director, Vicki Brooks. Vicki, great job. Our Library Director, Brandon Bowman. Brandon, there he is. Our City Clerk, Ed Norris. Speaking of unsung heroes, our IT director, Ricardo Singson. Ricardo, <laughs> he's getting it done. Our deputy director of the Department of Public Works and director of our facilities, David DeCoster. <laughs> our recreation director, Lori Stasiak. Hi, Lori. And finally, our deputy city clerk and director of elections, Lisa Vecchio. Along with the staff members in each of their departments, these men and women are taking our city to new heights. I think we all know that. There's some great things going on in our community. You know, they say to be a great or good city manager, even all you have to know how to do is to count to three. This is a city manager joke here. Not many of you guys are thinking. <laughs> in other words, all you have to know is how to add up to a majority vote on city council. I'm here to tell you, this is now my fourth city council that I've worked for, and we've never had to do that in the six years that I've been at the helm of this great city. And you may be wondering why. Well, the answer is simple. We're all part of a team. We don't agree on everything. We debate. But here's the difference between us and other communities in a lot of ways. We understand that politics is the art of compromise. We know how to compromise to get the job done and find solutions. And listen, it doesn't hurt that we have supportive residents, we have great business owners, we have competent elected officials, as I mentioned, we have great employees uh, with a can-do spirit, and we know that that equals positive results. We're seeing those in our community right now. Um, we've beaten all expectations, quite frankly, and built a solid foundation for our future, doing our best to leave no one behind and no one out. As the mayor will detail in a moment, we followed city council strategic plan. 
and I'm amazed at the progress that the staff has made on this. Um, and that was just five years ago when we city council put us on this path and we set out to achieve all of these goals and we've achieved all but a few. And uh, it's put us into, it's catapulted us into a pretty special moment in the city's history. I think, I think that's palpable in the community. It's, it certainly feels that way from the perspective of City Hall. Every employee in every department has played an important role in making that happen. And while I may get the accolades, and of course I also get the blame, I think we know that when certain situations are going on, I ultimately have 190 employees to thank for coming in here every single day, day in and day out, and giving it their all. And that's unprecedented. This is not your normal government. This, these are, this is a government of high achievers, and I'm very proud of that. Over the last several years, we've overcome many of our longstanding financial challenges, as you all know. And while that's impressive in and of itself, we still have work to do. We know that too. In fact, I'm here to tell you that the number one challenge remaining is our long-term unfunded retirement liabilities. There's a lot of words in there. These are benefits that were promised to employees from long ago that we hear now that you, as taxpayers, are paying for. These are promises that were made from the past that we're paying for. And we're just like almost every government entity in our state, including the state. We have our state representative here, so I can say that safely. The state itself is underfunded. And we have growing liabilities in there in the form of these unfunded benefits. And I'd be remiss, by the way, if I didn't use this opportunity to send a message to our friends in Lansing. Our state representative knows this. All of the other friends we have in Lansing. I want the state of Michigan to know that we aren't looking for a handout, that we aren't looking for your charity. We are like all cities across our state when we say that we're interested in a fair deal. And no matter what detours you throw at us or what tax dollars are diverted, we will not falter and we will not let you slow down our progress. It is not going to happen. These unfunded retirement benefits have created quite a burden for our city's general fund budget. We will overcome that burden. It's imperative, though, that we work together to find a common solution, compromise, finding solutions. That means everyone, not just me, not just the management staff, not just city council, our retirees, our unions, and everyone else comes together for the common good. If we do that, we will get the job done, no doubt about it. And you got to remember, this is not a natural disaster. This isn't a hurricane or a tornado. This is a man-made problem that was created by people long ago. And just as that was the case then in creating this issue for us today, we can deal with it today. We can overcome it. Now, I don't want to scare anyone sitting in the audience and giving you the impression that we're a financially struggling city. For those of you that know our financials, you know that we're not. We're a very stable city. We're an A-plus rated city. We're a very stable city. That does not change that we have these unfunded long-term liabilities. I, if we can find a way to fully fund these retirement liabilities, we can in turn relieve the city's general fund. This is the operating budget now from the burdens of the, of the past, as I mentioned, and open it up for tremendous possibilities. Think about it. If we're able to free up dollars in our operating budget that otherwise would have gone to pay for these long-term liabilities, every year we're paying for these, imagine the possibilities. Every dollar that we save in this effort could be repurposed for hiring new public safety officers, the men and women who come in here and protect us. Or we could even use those freed up funds to add more public programs and amenities that you love, that you've come to expect. There is no better time than now to take this on. And if we all work together as one Oak Park, one Oak Park, I can assure you we will overcome this. I want to say a big thank you to all of you, especially our residents. We have the best residents, the most supportive residents in all of the land. And I'm not just saying that. You've heard me say this before. Uh, it is absolutely true, and we very much appreciate it. Our employees, all the employees who are here today or listening or watching on TV, thank you very much. And of course, our leaders sitting to my right, the mayor, 
and to my left, the members of city council who are leading this city, working cooperatively into a very positive place. And I'm very proud and happy to be a part of that. It is now my pleasure to introduce our distinguished mayor, Marion McClellan. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's my. <laughs> Struggling with the. Uh... <laughs> um, thank you, City Manager Tungate. On behalf of City Council, I'd like to express our appreciation for your leadership and for inspiring us to rise to the challenges we face. Welcome, everyone, to the 2018 State of the City Address. It's a night of celebration of a year well lived, progress made, and a little bit of history. I'd like to thank my husband, Keith, in the back, hiding, uh, my best friend, partner in all adventures, and love of my life. Um, he's here tonight because he's only heard this speech 11 times so far. <laughs> Joining me tonight are my colleagues on city council, Mayor Pro Tem Solomon Radner. Council Member Carolyn Burns. <laughs> Council Member Regina Weiss. <laughs> Council Member Ken Rich. <laughs> we don't agree on everything, but generally we share the same vision. And that's made possible Oak Park's amazing progress. Everywhere I go, people are asking about Oak Park. They've noticed something. They've noticed the sunflowers. Gee, I wish we had those in our city. They've noticed the events that are happening all the time. We talked to a real estate gentleman tonight who says he gives our calendar to everyone because it's just brimming with happy people having a ball. Um, to the right of the city manager is Ebony Duff from our legal firm, Garon, Lukau, and Miller. They do a remarkable job. protecting our city's interests, and we give her plenty to do. She's not bored. Uh, I'm very delighted to welcome elected and appointed officials and representatives of our school district. Um, State Representative Robert Wittenberg, a fighter for the people. <laughs> Oakland County Commissioner Helene Zack. Oakland County Commissioner Nancy Quarles, 45th District Court, the Honorable Ma um, Judge Michelle Friedman Apple, Oak Park Board of Education Trustees, Albert A. Smith III, and Maxine Goodfriend, who has been serving the city for quite a while. We're very honored tonight to have Dr. Davida Colbert, Superintendent of Oak Park Schools. Thank you. <laughs> and Stan Trumpeter, with a long title, Director of Title Programs, Compliance, and Professional Development. Thank you for coming. <laughs> very important people are here with us tonight. They are the members of our boards and commissions. They are volunteers who advise city council. There are our eyes and ears and commit countless hours to identifying problems, recommending solutions, and putting on great events. For example, the Arts, Arts and Cultural Diversity Commission hosts the amazing World Day of Dance, a celebration of dance and food from around the world. My favorite thing that they brought in this year is the Detroit Institute of Arts Inside Out program. So starting from April until July, keep your eyes peeled for art projects out in the city. And there will be events following. Our Beautification Advisory Commission holds the annual flower sale and awards residents and business owners with those beautiful signs for fighting blight 
and for beautifying their property. The Recycling and Environmental Conservation Commission works to increase recycling, saving the city money and protecting the environment at the same time. Thanks to SACRA, we all got those wonderful rolling carts, better on our backs, and increased our recycling by 72% this year. The Parks and Recreation Commission members improve our programs, events and activities, and the members of that commission help with all events. Our, our fairly new corridor improvement authority is kind of like a downtown development authority, promotes growth of our retail business district. If you noticed the pots filled with greenery this year uh, out on Nine Mile and Coolidge, that was funded by that um, authority. The election commission and library board provide needed oversight um, and stand up for their, their uh, commission. Other boards and commissions like Zoning, Planning, Board of Review, Building Board of Appeals, Compensation, Retirement Board of Trustees serve critical uh, functions in our city. We depend on these members for their expertise and their judgment. This year, we reestablished, I think you saw up there, the annual appreciation dinner, and some of you were there. Uh, it was a memorable evening. Great to see so many residents. Uh, who are participating at such a high level of engagement. Thanks for your time. You are our Oak Park champions. If you belong to a board or commission, would you please stand at this time and accept our thanks. I'd like to introduce you to a former mayor of Oak Park, Richard W. Marshall, who served as a council member back in 1949 and became mayor uh, for four terms starting in 1951. Here's a quote from 50 years ago from Mayor Marshall, which reads, the type of city Oak Park will be in the future depends on the continued interest and activity of you, your children, and your children's children. I am sure it will always be a city well-planned, wholesome to live in, and one they will be proud to call their hometown. One of our greatest claims is that generation after generation, grandparents, parents, and children, and maybe their children, we choose Oak Park as the place to raise our families. New families are learning about our mid-century modern housing stock, our safe environment, diverse culture, strong sense of community, and we're still a bargain. Tonight is a celebration of hopes and dreams for the types of community you would like to live in in the future. I didn't meet Mayor Marshall, but he set the tone for residents to be active like you are and invested in their community. Their precedent made Oak Park the type of city we wouldn't think of leaving, and that spirit remains today. As we talked about, we're following a plan. In 2012, our city was on the edge of state financial review. City council and staff began to work on a five-year strategic plan as a guide to the future. The plan covered the years 2014 to 19, identified goals and initiatives to guide our operations. At that time, I remember sitting in the room and thinking, we're never going to get to all these goals and everything, that's just too far out. Tonight, I'm delighted to be able to tell you we've not only met them, but we've exceeded them. The plan explored questions like, what kind of city do we want to be? What are our aspirations? What are the most pressing challenges we see over the next five to 10 years? Um, Oh. Mm -hmm. Granny is having a time with the... Um... Ah. Um, so the question is, um, did we deliver? Well, the plan identified six priority areas, governance, administration, 
Economic Development, Technology, Marketing and Communications, and Public Service. So we're asking, did we deliver? And we're going to tell you what we accomplished, which as you can see is a great deal. As defined by city charter, legislative and policy powers are vested in the mayor and council. We represent the collective in interests of city residents and other stakeholders. The most important accomplishments are the new city ordinances to promote development, changes to the city code to update it, the adoption of a five-year strategic plan, approval of the three-year budget, and we were wise enough to extend the city manager's contract to ensure our impressive growth continues. For greater efficiency, we uh, consolidated some of our boards and commissions. As members, we are all accessible. You can phone us with questions or concerns. Some of you are getting information about the council actions and city events in the monthly e-blast called Message from the Mayor. Shameless self-promotion. An ongoing priority of the administration uh, section is to uh, maintain financial stability. Top on the list of accomplishments is the resolution of the four-year lawsuit between the cities of Oak Park, Huntington Woods, and Pleasant Ridge over the funding of the court. In the interest of the taxpayers, um, Director of Strategic Planning, uh, Crystal McLean, with City Manager Tungate and Assistant City Manager Yee, devised a fair settlement and a plan for future court operations that will save the city money. To prepare for funding uh, the pending financial challenges, City Manager Tungate formed an administrative task force uh, to design a long-term plan to fund retirement and health care costs in accordance with Michigan Public Act 202 provisions. This is a daunting task that is likewise faced by 110 other cities in Michigan. The Finance Department is in good hands under Director Sondra Crawford. It's our fifth straight year with a budget surplus, achieving a general fund balance in line with comparable cities, and allowing us to maintain an A-plus Standard & Poor's credit rating, which led to a refinancing of bond that realized a $1.8 million savings to our taxpayers. The city, through the direction of Human Resource uh, Director Vicki Brooks, is saving our employees money and lowering health care premiums at a time when this is a critical um, source of problems in cities. Oak Park joined several other communities to offer employees use of wellness centers. One of our goals was to implement data tracking systems and Director McLean influenced a benchmarking process to compare our progress to other communities. It's a tool to improve efficiency and to share best practices. Director McLean improved our phone system and spearheaded the Citizens Action Center that lets you submit inquiries and concerns online. Uh, another priority from the strategic plan is economic development. It's critical to building a sustainable committee, community in which to live and play and work. Uh, a primary objective was to increase retail businesses in the city. Today, retail commerce is in tra transition because of online shopping, and manufacturing is in transition um, because of robotics. So economic development is a challenging chore. Still, our economic development director, Kimberly Maroney, continues to attract major developments to Oak Park. Her department updated the master plan that guides land use and sustainable growth. Doing it in-house saved the city a great deal of money. Director Maroney oversaw the city's largest land deal ever with the FedEx Ground Distribution Center. Union Joints is still working to repurpose uh, the WWJ transmitter building on 8 Mile Road. When they're finished, it will be a crowd-pleasing destination. And yes, it is taking way longer than we expected. Community Housing Network is here tonight. Um, they are in the midst of repurposing the former Jefferson School into a 60-unit mixed-income development to provide appealing, affordable, and much-needed housing options. The townhomes will be completed this summer, and it is an amazing, 
amazing um, job. Thanks so much. Many thanks to Bob Lentz and Roger Thornburg. They took a blighted, burned out, crime-ridden property and transformed it into this beautiful loop on Greenfield. Appealing rental units, complete with dog park amenities. This brought occupancy from 27% when they took over to over 90% and attracting wonderful residents like nurses and hospital employees. The long awaited nine mile redesign project that will transform our city center with pocket parks, a street diet, and eventually a linear park is uh, soon to start. The city won a generous $983,000 grant and we expect to begin construction this spring. It will be a game changer. One of our major objectives is to improve the quality of life for our residents. And to that end, city planner Kevin Rakowski suggested allowing mixed use zoning districts. The first one will be on 11 Mile Road and it will liven up something that was just a former quiet industrial area soon will be certified as a redevelopment ready community. We are being recognized for effective redevelopment strategies. And why do we want this? Because then we'll be um, uh, eligible for grants and we can underwrite promising projects and maintain financial security. Also, we have several new projects that we can announce tonight, but uh, they're in the approval stage and we expect to announce them soon. You probably have heard rumors about at least one of them. The strategic plan's goal was to improve communication during um, emergencies. Kudos to our IT department uh, for achieving greater transparency, security, and customer service. The city uh, received a cyber attack that tried to kidnap the city's data and sell it back, but director Ricardo Singson's expertise and quick response ensured that the attackers did not prevail. He is, we are lucky to have him. IT expanded the camera security system in the library and community center, upgraded the 9-11 emergency system and dispatch system, the website, email, and Wi-Fi. He collaborated with finance staff so we can access our property taxes online, make online payments, and retrieve records about how's my water bill doing or that kind of thing. This past year, 11,000 payments were made online through Access MyGov, and 62,000 records were retrieved free of charge. Folks, if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> From another senior citizen, I can tell, right? A critical aspect of our strategic plan was to encourage and improve interaction. Uh, between city officials and residents to engage our, our community stakeholders and do what I think we're starting to do already, instill a sense of community pride. We are all just walking a little taller these days. Our departments provide valuable services and hold great events. Denise DeSantis, Director of Community Engagement and Public Information, whom you met earlier, ensures that we know about all these events. It's very easy to read information of interest, inquire about an uh, issue that bothers you, feel welcome to participate, and be encouraged to volunteer. In 2011, when I started, we had a quarterly newsletter and a cable station. Now, we are the communications model city. Thanks to Director DeSantis, who monitors 19 new communication tools to engage our Oak Park residents businesses, and the media, including the yearly calendar, which is gorgeous, website, city magazine, another beautiful thing, new cable programs, social media channels, e-blast, marquees, and more. And her department decides all the engaging graphics that we've seen tonight and, and other days. Do you know the most popular way that residents um, connect with the city? I'm a Facebook fiend, so I thought it was Facebook. No, it's the website with over 60,000 views per month. Let me say that again, 60,000 views per month. We've only got 30,000 people in the city. <coughs> That's <laughs> Director DeSantis con con contributed to the emergency notification system so we can get 
information and important announcements on TV, cable, and radio, website, Facebook, and Twitter. If you haven't already done so, please opt in for the emergency robocalls, voicemails, text messages, and emails. You can look for the yellow button on the homepage of the city's website or email contact us at oakparkmi.gov um, or just call. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and bookmark our website. Public services. Providing excellent public services has been a key priority of the strategic plan. All departments engage the community in innovative and high quality programming. Tonight we will talk about six of them. Public safety. Safety, as we all agree, is our number one concern. And these fine people are the ones who make sure we have it in Oak Park. Um, they serve in three capacities, police, fire, and medical first response. They're amazingly trained. On ever, any given day, these officers respond to traffic detail, fires, wellness checks, helping someone who needs help, and conflict resolution, as well as thwarting crime. And if that wasn't enough, they offer outstanding citizen outreach programs, also models. This year, Public Safety Director Steve Cooper established the first canine unit. He instituted a successful traffic enforcement detail to deal with speeding on the side streets, which many of you called me about. We're all concerned, so we're, we're, we're listened and we're doing something about it. Officers always are positively interacting with our residents. I hear raves about them. They will continue their wildly popular public safety ice cream truck this summer. If you look hungry, they might stop and give you a free ice cream. The Citizens Academy is now in its third year. Happily, Director Cooper reports that crime against people and property have declined this year. Can we give him a hand? <laughs> Public Works. This is the department that is hidden and we don't think about it unless it's not working. They are responsible for construction and maintenance of the infrastructure and properties, roads, water supply, waste management, city campuses, and parks. It is efficiently run by assistant city manager who is also the director of public works and the city engineer. He is ably assisted by Dave DeCoster, director of facilities and deputy director of DPW. They oversaw that LED street lighting conversion, did you notice? It will save the city $150,000 a year, plus the lights are brighter. DPW is spearheading the long-awaited project on Nine Mile, the one that includes pocket parks, trailheads, pathways, and signage. They rebuilt Granson Street from the beginning from uh, Coolidge to Church. We got something like $170,000 from the state this year to help with our roads. Just for your information, to repave a mile of roads costs a million dollars. So thank you, but it's a drop in the bucket. Talk to them. <laughs> um, they also designed the upcoming bridge project that we're looking forward to over 696. They're busy replacing water mains and patching potholes. Um, we would be putting in new roads if the state was funding us. Uh, but you can report the potholes in the meantime, and the City of Oak Park promises they will be done in uh, 24 hours. Currently, workers are renovating the 45th District Court building. Next, technical and planning, run by Director Robert Barrett, has three divisions, building, code enforcement, and engineering. It is to maintain the character, what's real important to us, appearance and physical standards in the community, things that we count on as community members. We want to eliminate blight and thank Director Barrett's team for progress toward this goal. He has a renter inspector who doesn't cut landlords any slack. He insists that properties are well maintained up to Oak Park standards. This department this year changed the penalties for code violations 
from misdemeanors to civil infractions. They also were um, thoughtful enough to initiate the first sidewalk financing options for residents. So if you have a big bill, there are ways to finance it. TNP, as they're called, has been busy. And to give you some idea of their progress, they replaced 3,700 feet of water mains last year, 100,000 feet of sewers, 49,000 square feet of sidewalk, 14,000 square yards of pavement, 700 feet of storm pipes. Inspectors did 2,500 rental inspections, 3,600 building inspections, issued 6,700 code notices, and 800 work orders to abate blight. Pretty impressive. The city clerk's office is directed by Ed Norris, uh, supports city council, coordinates the boards and commissions, responds to freedom of information requests, and monitors elections. Um, joined by Lisa Vecchio, the director of elections, uh, Clerk Norris runs trainings for up to 150 poll workers. This team streamlined the voting process, providing extra laptops so we don't have to wait so long at the polls, and replaced aging voting equipment with an updated system that is more secure and easily accessible for those with disabilities. Last but not least, I spotlight two um, of the probably more well-known departments. The Recreation Department, run by Director Lori Stasiak, and the Oak Park Library, run by Director Brandon Bowman. A major goal of the city is to enhance the quality of life for our residents. To that end, the Rec Department brings us the community events that we love to attend, like Winterfest, Summerfest, and Autumn Fest. And following the Director's philosophy that every year our events should get bigger and better, this year, we are going to have a spring fest. <laughs> Oak Park also rec plans the beloved 4th of July parade and fun fest. The Boo Bash attracted 6,500 participants, and our daddy-daughter dance sold out for the second year in a row. The summer concert series is so popular that we're increasing it from four to seven concerts. And the top draw was Kimmy Horn's concert, which drew 2,000 people sitting in the park on a summer evening. If you didn't come last year, come join us. The rec team customizes their offerings to meet the demands of the community. Notably, since <laughs> <laughs> we're an active community <laughs> with a lot of spirit, um, they filled an unmet need for women's only and men's only swim. There's also public swim, swim lessons, and aquatics programs that were customized to meet your needs and still maintain our regular public hours of operation. Pool revenues increased by 22%. Somebody is doing something right. You can see we, we just adopted a Parks and Recreation Master Plan based on input from you. You can see it on our website. It was a monumental task. Many of you completed the survey, so your preferences will guide us in the years to come. The department joined the library staff and Oak Park Public Schools to develop much needed after school youth programs. And we coordinate with um, the schools. The, um, the school kids interviewed all of us for the 4th of July parade. They were the reporter on the, on the spot. It was wonderful. One way to improve quality of life is to bring residents together for enjoyable activities. Libraries are transforming now, and Oak Park Library is right at the top with them. They're becoming gathering places for us, for people with like interests to come and share. People come for games, adult coloring now, movie nights, do-it-yourself clubs, and many high-quality events. Anytime you go now, the place is mobbed. Used to be kind of an empty building, and now it is a center for us. Thanks to the friends of the library, most activities are free to the public. We thank you. Um, programs on owls, thanks to Harry Potter, and the paranormal investigations were the ones that brought the biggest crowds this year. The library partners with other cities to offer great Michigan Reads program. They got many grants. Our library was one of three libraries in the country to be awarded young 
Adult Library Services Association grant, which will bring thousands of books, CDs, and DVDs to our library. Many thanks to our children's librarian, Charlie Osborne. Memorial Weekend, the director will install a new circulation system that's entirely web-based. We can do this. It will allow the library to remotely serve those in the community. These energetic departments have achieved our goal of improving our quality of life. We all notice it. Have you noticed it's um, just more fun to live in Oak Park now? Um, someone came up to me at Winterfest and said, they moved here four years ago and it seems to be getting better every year and they're so glad they chose Oak Park because their family takes advantage of all of our um, offerings. <laughs> When we sat down and wrote these strategic goals, I thought, we'll never achieve all these goals. But as I said, we've exceeded expectations and achieved the objectives we've set. And these are only some of our accomplishments. Well, how did we do? Did we deliver? Are we a better community due to your insight, our policies, and the city's administration? We hope so. We will now look to the future. And again, we're going to be asking for your input. Consider filling out a survey and coming to a town hall so your voice is heard. Um, as Mayor Marshall said, together we develop the community in which you aspire to live and raise your family. And now um, Benny has a video for us. We ask people, what are your aspirations for Oak Park?
This concludes the State of the City Address. But before you leave tonight, I'd like you to join us uh, and take a few minutes to think about what you would aspire for the city. And we've got those black Aspire cards, uh, like the ones you saw in the video. And here, we all filled one in tonight, if you'd hold those up. <laughs> Hundred percent voter turnout. Amen. Amen. Strong schools, healthy community. Nice. <laughs> That's cute. Um, as you might have already noticed, here's Fred the flower. Um, there is a favor on your chair. It is a packet of sunflower seeds. Sunflowers are a symbol of joy and hope, the perfect symbol for the city of Oak Park. By planting them in your garden, or coming to an event, or volunteering for the city, you are helping us grow our city. If you didn't receive a seed packet or would like more, they're more available in the hallway. Thank you for coming and sharing with us tonight. Have a great night.